Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Carmen Bryant, your host of Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Thank you guys so much to all the new subscribers. Thank you for joining this tribe. Thank you so much for trusting something that I have to say concerning your situation, your awareness, you know, your discovery uh, and your healing process and or your healing process. Uh, thank you guys so much even for the support of purchasing my book. Some of you guys have given me feedback and you said that the book has helped. Please go out. Uh, it's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble. Uh, and you can order uh, Unmasking the Illusion of Perfection. It gives you a, uh, you get to see narcissist abuse played out. Uh, for those of you that are not Christians, just take the principles out of it because it does bring encouragement through scriptures, but it gives you an idea of what narcissist abuse looks like played out not just by education, but watching it play out in people's lives so that you know that you are not crazy. So thank you guys for ordering my book and thank you guys so much for your love and your support. And so today I wanted to come in and I wanted to talk about, uh, someone asked me to talk about soul ties. And so I wanted to uh, title this Narcissistic Soul Ties. Now um, do uh, keep in mind that um, I bring it to you from a clinical perspective uh, experiential and clinical uh, perspective uh, but please go and subscribe to my mentors YouTube channel she is the presiding prelay of into his chambers global uh, ministries uh, she is over several churches and ministries and she is my mentor and pastor um, she does provide you with insight and information concerning narcissist abuse from a biblical and spiritual perspective also um, the honorable bishop rc blakes also talks about soul ties from a biblical perspective and so uh, i do respect each one of you have different you know you come from different countries you know we're not all americans on here some of you guys are in different countries you have different cultures you have different belief system you have different uh, spiritual and religious beliefs um i you know the way that i bring you the information you know and you just have to take it um you know based on how you believe and what you think and i kind of bring it to you from the way that i think and you just have to take the principles out and apply it to you know how you you know how you understand um i do believe number one that we are a spirit uh, and that spirit has a soul. Uh, that soul and that spirit is housed in a body, like a spacesuit, you know. And that body is what um, has us interacting in a natural environment. Uh, well, the soul um, houses your emotions, your character, your thought, your will, uh, your perceptions. You know, you interact with people. That, that is the soul is what makes you a human being. And I know already what some of you guys are thinking. So that means the narcissist is not a human because they don't possess a soul. I already know what you guys are thinking because I was reading your comments. Uh, but the soul is what causes a person to be a human being. Your thoughts, your perceptions, your emotions, your reasoning. I even wrote a little notes here for myself. Your reasoning, your abilities, your character, your feelings, your emotions, uh, your perceptions. And, you know, that's what the soul is, your psyche. That's what you call a psyche. Um, and so with that, when you say a soul tie, now we're talking about narcissistic um, soul ties, but uh, when you say a soul tie, you're talking about uh, a bonding or a connection from soul to soul for another person. Now, you have healthy and you have unhealthy soul ties. Uh, some of you that have uh, counselors or you know you have an emotional connection with that individual but it's healthy because there are certain boundaries that are set you have emotional soul ties or emotional connections with your children with your loved ones you know um, and then you have those dysfunctional soul ties you know for example with the narcissist um, whom does not connect emotionally with anybody they use people but they use the innocence of emotional ties to get excuse me to get you addicted and so excuse me uh, so when when I looked up the word tie uh, uh, let's look here tie and I don't mean a tie around your neck uh, Marion Webster I'm gonna give you a few definitions so one is to fasten attach or close by means of tie tying to form a knot so you're like enmeshed 
your emotions are enmeshed with another person. Sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad. If it's healthy, it's okay, but you don't want to become overly enmeshed with another person where you, you, you lose your individuality. You're so enmeshed with another person that you begin to mirror the other person and you have no self-identity for yourself. You have no you know, you think like the other person thinks. You don't, you don't even think for yourself anymore. Um, another one is to place or establish in relationship, connect. And another one, and this is the one I wanted to use, to restrain from independence or freedom of action or choice, constrained by or as if by authority, influence, agreement, or obligation. So check this out. When you have a narcissistic soul type, Think about this. That narcissist has tied your soul. They didn't tie into your soul with you. They tied your soul and they restrained you from your independence and freedom of action or choice. So they have restrained you from being an independent individual to making your own choices, to try to force you to be totally dependent on them. They have constrained you by, uh, by using in authority over you usually by fear and by force, uh, influence, agreement, or they have obligated you to them. How did they do this? Through trauma bonds. So you have been trauma bonded. And before I, well, let me go into trauma bond. You have been trauma bonded. So you have literally become addicted to another individual. So let me go to addictions. And if you go to um, psychology today um, and look up the word, Addiction. So it doesn't does it have an author in here. I want to make sure I cite the proper credits, pro proper person. Um, uh, uh, Samoon Ahmad. He's a medical doctor. He's a, a psychiatrist, a professor of psychiatry at NYU School of Medicine. Uh, Judith Wertman. She's a PhD, so she's a psychologist and the co-author of The Serotonin Power Diet. You have Dr. Seth J. Gillian who is a uh, psychologist, a clinical assistant professor of psychology and psychiatry department of the University of uh, Pennsylvania, and Adi, Adi Jaffe, he's a psychologist, uh, PhD, is a lecturer uh, at UCLA and the CEO of IGNTD, an online company that produces podcasts and educational programs on mental health and addiction. So I'm not sure if he's a psychologist or not, but he's a PhD. So these are the individuals that blog this information um, to make sure you know it's from a reputable source. Let's look at addiction. So when you say trauma bonding, you have been trauma bonded, meaning now you are addicted. That was the whole purpose of the trauma bonding. So, and, and I'm just give you, I'm just gonna go through the whole thing, but just give you this information. Addiction is a condition in which a person engages in the use of substance, we're not talking about substance, or in a behavior for which the rewarding effects provide a compelling incentive to repeatedly pursue the behavior despite detrimental consequences. You have been so trauma bonded or so addicted to this narcissist where you will continue to pursue uh, this individual regardless of knowing the detrimental consequences of being in a relationship because you need to fulfill that feeling of uh, that addiction you need to that that feeling of withdrawal you can't handle that emotional withdrawal um, and please go back and watch my two videos on trauma bonding one and two um, addiction may involve a use of substance such as alcohol we know that part or behaviors such as gambling. There is scientific evidence that the addictive substance or behaviors share a key neuro neurobiological feature. They intensely activate brain pathways of reward and reinforcement, many of which involve the neurotransmitter dopamine. So let's look. Um, both substance use disorders and gambling behaviors to include the addiction on a narcissist, have increased likelihood of being accompanied, accompanied, accommodated, accom, I know the word, to go along with mental health conditions such as depression and anxiety or other pre-existing problems. Okay, uh, let's look. 
Complex conditions that affect reward reinforcement, motivation and memory systems of the brain, substance use and gambling disorders are characterized by impaired control over usage, social impairment involving disruption of everyday uh, activities and relationships. So this is talking about the substance abuse. Uh, so let me go back down a little bit. Because addiction affects the brain executive functions, individuals who develop an addiction may not be aware that their behavior is causing problems for themselves or other. Over time, a pursuit of pleasurable effects of the substance or behavior may dominate an individual's activities. So the love bombing is the substance that was introduced to you you know, you your your dopamine and your serotonin and your oxytocin is all over the place. This is a beautiful feeling, and I feel empowered, and I feel beautiful, and they make me feel so good about myself. I love this feeling, and I think I'm in love. And what happens is, is they do that. They 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 love bomb you so good. And some of them, as you know, some somatic narcissists or even cerebral narcissists, some of them um, do. You know, some of you have said some of them are very. Uh, aesthetically pleasing, meaning some of them are just fine, y'all, they just fine, man and woman alike, they fine, you know, and some of them are ugly, Shrek, but when you are addicted, sometimes, you know, and that fog starts coming over your mind, you don't see that anymore, you are now focused on those feelings, the, it feels so good, um, and some of them, you know, the sexual experience is off the chain. And for some of you said the sexual experience was not, but it was that fear, that love bombing is like a, a crack dealer or, or a drug dealer. They may, you know, introduce you to the drugs just enough to get you to a point where now you start craving that drug. So they give it to you, give it to you, give it to you until you crave it to a point where you do anything to get it. And that's what happened with that narcissist. They love bomb you so good that you'll do anything to get that feeling, to get that feeling. Well, at the same time, they turn around and then they begin to introduce trauma bonding. So let's look and see what trauma bonding is. So um, let's look and see who I want to read first. So trauma bonding, uh, this is on um, abuseandrelationships.org. If you look under trauma bonding, bonding is a biological and emotional process that makes people more important to each other over time. Unlike love, trust, or attraction, bonding is not something that can be lost. It is cumulative and only gets greater, never smaller. Bonding grows with spending time together. That's why during the love bombing phase, they pay you attention. They spend all this time with you to get those emotions, that dopamine, that serotonin all over the place. Um, living together, eating together, making love together, or some of you guys having sex together, having children together, or being together uh, during stress or difficult times. Bad times bond, bad times bond people uh, as strongly as good times. Bonding is a part of why it's harder to leave an abusive relationship uh, the longer it continues. So the longer you're in an abusive relationship, the stronger the bond comes. Bonding makes it hard to enforce boundaries because it is much harder to keep away from people to whom we have bonded. In leaving a long relationship, it is not always useful to judge the correctness of the decision by how hard it is because it will always be hard. Let's see. Trauma bonding is a term that was developed by Patrick Carnes in the misuse of fear, excitement, sexual feelings, and sexual physiological, physiologic, physiology, physiology, I must be tired tonight, physiology, physio, it's physiological, um, to entangle another person. Many primary aggressors tend toward extreme behavior and risk taking. The trauma bonding is a factor in their relationship. This is where the Stockholm syndrome comes from. Uh, so let's look. So in fact, there is a therapy, neuro linguistic programming that teaches a technique called frag, frag, fractionation, which is to increase bonding by conversationally or interpersonally moving the target from one feeling to its opposite and back again several times in the course of the conversation. But think about when a narcissist is doing it, the trauma bonding. Um, let's see. Uh, so let me move to the next one. So um, in this one, who wrote this? Make sure I get proper credit. Michael Damsel. This one is under Site Central, and this is the recovery expert with Sherry Stein. She's a uh, PsyD, so she's a psychologist, 
And she said, um, and this is one thing that I can't stand when people ask this question. One thing often asked by those in helping profession when confronted with a person in an unhealthy relationship is, why do you stay? Never ask that question. If those of you that are in a uh, or you counseling medical field, uh, whether you're um, in the legal field, do not ask a person, why do they stay? This is question. Uh, this question has implication of weakness and failure on the part of the victim and usually causes shame. So a lot of people uh, deal with extreme shame because they can't answer that question. I don't know why I stay because you are addicted to the person that is abusing you. Rather than asking this question of the victim of abuse, it's best for a counselor to understand the concept of trauma bonding. And many people do not understand the concept of trauma bonding and explain it to the individual who seems to be stuck in a bad relationship. Trauma bonding is loyalty to a person who is destructive. And that is the Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, while the idea of bonding tends to bring up connotations of something good and beneficial, trauma bonds are unhealthy. According to Patrick Carnes in the book, Betrayal Bonds, uh, Betrayal Bonds, there are a number of signs that a person is involved in an unhealthy bond with a partner or other significant person. Here are some thoughts to consider determining if you are trauma bonded to someone. There's a constant pattern of non-performance, yet you continue to believe promises contrary. They're always promising something and you're constantly having the hope that they're gonna follow through with those promises. I'm gonna change, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it, I made a mistake, you know something is wrong with me, um, you know, help me get into treatment, just take me into treatment, you know, take me into counseling, you know, I can do better, give me one more chance, I can prove myself to you. But as time goes, you see it's, it's constantly a pattern that, that they don't follow through, they do not perform what they say they're gonna do. And it's just a matter of time that the mass falls and the, and the more times and the longer time you spend with them, the shorter people period of time that 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 is called love bombing the shorter the love bombing becomes because then they think you got they got you um, um, you know trauma bonded to them again they got you back uh, others seem disturbed by something that has happened to you or was said to you and you are not that means now you have been desensitized you know um, when you're like that is not normal you know um, they're sitting there uh, um, they're humiliating you and they're threatening to kill you and, and you're saying well no you know it's not that serious they always do that you know they're always playing that game you don't take it serious anymore because you've been desensitized you've heard it so much and they've done it so much as desensitized you and many people have been killed like that because you have desensitized to a point where you know you don't take them serious and then they follow through with it um, you feel stuck because the other person keeps doing destructive things, but you believe there's nothing you can do about it. So it's almost like there's nothing I can do. There's no escape. There's nothing I can do to change them or me. I'm kind of stuck in this situation. What am I supposed to do? You try to change the person in becoming less destructive by trying to get them to stop an addiction or become a non-abuser. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not going to happen. A narcissist is not going to change. This is their pattern of relation. This is their relationship pattern. Relationship pattern. I don't care if they do leave you and discard you and go to somebody else. This is their habit. Tigers don't change their stripes. This is their habit. This is what they do. Um, and so it doesn't matter what you do. I don't care if you lose weight and become as thin as a as this piece of paper. You can come as thin as this piece of paper or as get big as the moon. You can cut your hair off until they see your brain waves. Or you can grow your hair until you're Rapunzel, you know, until people are climbing on your hair to get up on the side of a building it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you can get eyelashes like mine or eyelashes to the back of your neck that when you blink you just pull the whole bun across the top of your head it doesn't matter what you do you'll never appease them or satisfy them they are not you cannot change them they will not change and they always they never look within they always will tell you all your faults and if you weren't like this if you weren't like this and you drive yourself crazy trying to change yourself to make this person change there's nothing that you can do to make Make this individual change there's nothing there's nothing you can do if a person doesn't accept you for who you are then they're not the person for you whether you're in a narcissistic relationship or not you should not have to change for another person if they're telling you all the things they need to change but yet you can see their faults and they're not doing anything to change themselves that's a red flag you should not have to change now, there's a difference between growing and a healthy and and there is no such thing as a perfect person there may be a perfect person for you or you may be a perfect person for 
or someone you compliment each other and you know that you know I'm just the one for you you know there's that type of person but they're still not perfect and within time you get to learn that person and you change certain things like some people don't like to cook and you know when you love a person you're like you know what I love you and and you know I'm, let me just cook and feed you or you know there's certain things that you may not have liked and you know let me do this for this individual you and you guys learn to change with each other you grow together so you're growing together you know you loud and he's not or he's loud and you not and so you realize I, th I think I'm talking too loud it kind of you know let me soften my tone a little bit when I'm talking you explain things that's just who I am but you learn like you know that's not sensitive and I, I you know let me change so you two grow together and make changes together a narcissist is not like that they never look within, they never look within to change themselves. And they always tell you all the things you need to do to appease them. And no matter what it is you do, it is never satisfying to you. That is a trauma bond. You are trauma bonded to that individual because you still think that there's something you could do to change them. They're never going to change. And the longer they live, the worse they get. And the more supply they get, the worse they get with each one of their supplies. Trust me. Um, you keep having repetitive damaging fights with this person that nobody wins. You just have these circular arguments. You feel like you're crazy. It's like you're talking to yourself. It doesn't matter what you say. They take you off topic. They divert. They project. It's like these are pointless arguments and no one ever, there's never any resolve. And so you always feel like there's never any resolve about this topic. You can tell them, you know, things or you can ask them to do certain things and they just refuse to comply. Something as simple as, can you do me a favor when you come out the bathroom, turn the light off when you come? Oh, okay. You know, my bad. You know, and they purposely leave the light on. And they look at you like, I heard you. I heard you. You know, man and female, male and female alike. Uh, let's see. You seem unable to detach from the person even though you can't trust them or really don't even like them. Some of you guys knew that you were in the relationship and you couldn't stand the narcissist, but you couldn't figure out why you couldn't leave. Some of you guys are in a relationship with the narcissist and you're looking at them like, who is this long-headed tadpole that that I'm in a relationship. I can't stand this individual. I don't even know why I'm with you. But for some reason, I just can't make myself go. I can't leave and I can't stand this individual. I know I need to go, but I don't understand. You are trauma bonded. You are addicted. It, you know, you know that you need to go or you know that you don't like the individual. You can't stand. They open up their eyes and you can't stand them, but you just can't bring yourself to leave. You are trauma bonded. That is an addiction. That is a soul tie. They have tied you and enmeshed you in their soul and you can't break away from that regardless of, of, of you know the truth about how you feel about that individual. When you try to leave this person, you find yourself missing them to a point of longing that is so awful that you believe it's going to destroy you. That is that addiction and those withdrawal symptoms. Some of you guys don't even care if they say something nice. You just want to hoover if they just cuss you out, you're satisfied and it's like inject yourself like at least I got a high out of that at least they said something to me that ladies and gentlemen the trauma bonds the 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 uh, trauma bonds is the soul ties you were trauma bonded you were love bombed you were you were you were caused to be addicted to this individual and now you have this emotional tie you have this soul tie your soul your emotions are totally enmeshed with this individual and they're not enmeshed with you they're, they don't have the same feeling as you do, but their whole goal was to get you so dependent on them that you can't survive life without them. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a soul tie. Someone asked, how do you get beyond the soul tie? First of all, the, the, keep in mind, I always say the same thing. Some of you have children and are married to the narcissist. You can't just, there are certain laws, I don't know what state you're in, but there are laws that govern, you know, husbands and wives and their rights when it comes to children. You can't just get up and take those kids because they can get you for kidnapping or whatever that law is. That's why I advise everyone, watch these videos, get a plan together, talk to a, a legal advocate, talk to a domestic violent advocate, violence advocate, where they can give you laws and give you ways in order to escape the abuse. And the videos will help prepare you mentally and give you strength to make those decisions that you need to make that you have to make informed decisions if you're with an individual and you have nothing to lose leave 
And the biggest thing is, is to remain no contact. That no contact gives you space in between to clear that fog in your mind to help you to start thinking clear. So the first thing is, is that no contact to clear your mind and to lift that fog because right now you questioning yourself you don't even make decisions without second guessing your decisions because they have caused you to be totally dependent on them. It's what they say is how they think is how they perceive things is how the education that they don't have that they're giving you information, you know? And so you are so totally dependent on this person that you can't even make decisions for yourself. Everything about you, you begin to second guess. And the longer you stay no contact, the more that fog start to lift up where you finally start seeing clearly and you're like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe how, this happen you know how do you know now you're looking back like how did this happen i don't understand how the, but you see that fog starts lifting i tell you guys you know yes there are many counselors that do not understand what narcissist abuse is what trauma bonding is you know my my best advice is to find someone that is um versed in domestic violence that's versed in trauma um and to to for emdr to help you with the anxiety but to help you um, to get your footing back, to help you with a clear mind, to help you, you know, sometimes you got to educate the therapist and sometimes you don't have time to educate, you know, find, you know, the domestic violent, uh, violence, um, uh, agencies that provide counseling, the sexual assault centers that provide counseling, the YWCA's in community that it has counselors available that understand this. There are even lawyers that understand what you've been through, you know, but get help, uh, get counseling, keep your no contact the no contact give you space because as long as they keep trauma bonding you love bombing you and going through the cycle you'll constantly be addicted to break the addiction and to break the soul tie you have to literally make a decision that i know this is going to hurt this is going to be the worst feeling i ever but you have to prepare yourself mentally and get your strength and your stamina together to maintain that no contact to have that fog lift so you can think clearly get Get you counseling get a mentor get a life coach that's gonna hold you accountable to tell you don't do that don't go back you know even some of you guys here when you guys are talking I see you guys interject immediately and say don't you do it don't you go back stay no contact girl or uh, girl or dude you know don't go back don't do it whatever you do don't do it but for someone that is encouraging that someone responded and and you're looking like man I almost went back you know, I almost went back, but someone on here has commented on one of your comments and encouraged you guys. That's why I love you guys. You guys are like an awesome tribe. You guys are very, very intelligent. So I don't know what has been said to you guys because some of you guys have been through pure hell. I'm going to tell you that now. Some of you guys question yourself whether I'm smart, whether I'm educated. No, you guys are very, very intelligent individuals. This narcissist has, has, has basically gotten to a point where as long as they can keep you in a state of you know they're smarter than you or you don't know what you're talking about you're going to question yourself you guys are very that's what that's what drew them to you was your was was something of strength to you you know whether it was your intelligence your job your personality your demeanor just you living life you breathing and smiling in the morning is what they wanted from you. That is what drew them to you is the fact that you had some type of normalcy about yourself, regardless of your deficiencies. And a lot of you are beating yourself up. You have joined in with the narcissist and abusing your own self. Narcissist is not even there. Have you guys seen the, the movie, It's a Thin Line Between Love and Hate, where she beat herself up with a grapefruit? we see you with a bunch of bruises in your face and we're wondering like what happened to you you sitting at the house beating yourself up with a grapefruit that's you beating yourself up you know but you don't join in with the narcissist to beat yourself up some of you guys you guys are some awesome people i've had the opportunity to talk to many of you on the phone i've had an opportunity to, to email some of you guys have responded on these you know inbox me on facebook you guys are very amazing people very powerful people you just don't see it yet it's gonna come, it takes time. And the longer you've been in a relationship with this narcissist, male or female alike, or family members, you know, the longer you've been in a relationship, the more trauma bonded you've been. So for you guys thinking that, okay, I'm just gonna watch this video and I'm gonna be cured tomorrow, it's not gonna happen that way. It was a long time that you have been manipulated and programmed and deprogrammed and reprogrammed and, and manipulated and, and trained to think a certain way that it takes a while. You know, you got prisoner of wars that, or prisoners 
that have been in prison that have never seen an iPhone. You got to teach them what the iPhone looks like or a computer. Um, they haven't seen, you know, um, we got electric cars. They haven't seen no electric cars before. You know, you got these sport. What is that? You know, you know, or but but it's a whole new world to you now to have to discover yourself and how awesome you really are because believe you me you guys are awesome so hopefully this is giving you guys some information about the narcissistic soul tie the trauma bonds the addictions so hopefully this has helped you guys giving you a little information please give me your feedback tell me what you think and once again thank you guys so much for supporting this channel you guys make it happen and you guys make me research and i love providing you guys with information it is truly an honor and a pleasure to know that you guys actually listen to me and then you comment and interact with me it is such an honor and it's so much fun believe you me uh, i know it's hard uh but thank goodness that some of you guys said that you can smile even when you're listening to the videos and i and you know i am the type of person to well you don't know but i'm the type of person i love to know that you guys smile even through your pain even through your tears you can crack a smile that lets me know and that lets you know that there is some hope and there is recovery okay so if you have not already please subscribe to my channel i'm dr carmen bryant this is overcoming narcissist abuse i do have and hit the hit the bell so you know whenever i upload to Tuesday through Friday. Today's Friday, so happy Friday to you guys. I come on live on Sunday evenings between 8 and 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. This Saturday, I will be traveling, so there is a possibility I probably will not be able to come live because of the fact that I, I because I'm moving, you know, so I'm moving and driving, so I won't be able to come live. Um, and so, but I'll try to post something just to let you guys know I'm thinking about you and just so you guys can start your week. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Um, I also did a new um, Facebook page. It is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. You'll see my book. So those of you that have not ordered the book already, go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble and um, look for unmasking the illusion of perfection you can go um, is kindle it is on ebook as well um, you can go to my community page i have it there with the links um, so that you can click the links and you can go straight to the page wherever you want to order from and thank you guys so much for supporting me and purchasing my books i really appreciate that and hopefully it helps you to see that you're not the only one that has been through this and that some people uh, don't recognize that what narcissist abuse actually looks like so this book actually shows you narcissist abuse in action with all these different women that have been through it the things that have been said why they think the way that they were thinking how they were even as a child how they were groomed or or, or trained to think that caused them to be um, you know to cause them to be kind of handed over into a relationship with a narcissist um, and so hopefully it helps you it is a Christian book so those of you that are you know not in the Christian faith you know just take the principles out of there I did use scriptures to encourage you to tell you what what the Bible says about your value um, so those of you that are that are not Christian just take the principles out of the book and the stories to let you know that you are not crazy and that you're not the only one that has been through this and I am working on my second book and so some of you have asked about donation if you go to the community tab I do have my cash app and my PayPal there if you want to donate thank you so much for asking uh, but if you do want to donate you are more than welcome to go and donate um, and I will be using that to um, for the second book and to begin our um, our webinars classes uh, because some of you guys can't afford the coaching some of you guys you know obviously you can't get counseling with me because you're out of state and I cannot provide counseling out of state but if I create classes that can help you through this process of different stages of where you are at you know you could purchase the classes and you can get you know and I'm gonna do another book and try to do a workbook that goes along with that so you can do self-care but you'll have me there in the webinars where you can go back and you can look at these um, videos thank you so much once again um, I still have my professional page psychological health consultants and services um, and then overcoming narcissist abuse is my new public page uh, with the book on there where I can upload videos I've been having some problems uploading video videos have been taking like a day or two to upload them so I don't know what's going on uh, but thank you guys so much for your support make sure you hit the like button because I do upload on, on this YouTube channel and on that one thank you guys once again and as okay hold on someone told me to say as my friend always says so I'm gonna change it around I want you guys to go and be great be the greatest people that you were created to be go and live life life is huge 
go live life. This has been an interruption in your life. That's fine. Take it. When life give you lemon child, make lemon lipstick, make lemon hairspray, make lemon body spray, make lemon meringue pie, make lemon, you know, make some lemon stuff, lemon earrings if you have to. Work that lemon, honey. Okay? So for those of you, live life. Take this and you can you you can monetize it. Go monetize it. You know, go talk about it. People need to hear your story. Males and females alike, especially you kings. People need to know that you've been through this too because women are narcissists as well and they abuse just as bad as men abuse. So you guys, we need to hear your voice. We need to hear you speak up and talk. Thank you, Kings, for being here. I really appreciate it. I honor you, gentlemen. And I want you to know that on this channel, you are well-respected and you are honored. Thank you so much for being here with us and thank you for even encouraging the Queens that are on here. We need it and we know you need it. Go and be great. Be the greatest person that you were created to be.